My name is Matt Hinkle with MS FireNet and I'm here with John Russell and Justin Sneed to go over a few different helmets today. We're going to start off reviewing leather fire helmets and then move into traditional composites and then modern fire helmets. I'm going to start off with Cairns traditional leather fire helmets. These have been around for about 175 years. This is one of the first type models that they made. This is a 1965 before they had to get into impact caps and, and more safety features. This helmet only weighs 3.1 pounds, uh, but this is basically the same design they've been using up until the past year. So nothing really has changed other than the weight. The newer style Cairns leather helmets are a bit heavier. The New Yorker style weighs about four pounds with a medium Sam Houston at 4.5 and a large Sam Houston at 4.7. The New Yorker style is OSHA compliant, where the Sam Houston's are both uh, NFPA compliant. Okay, a few differences between the original 5A and the new N5A is you can see the height of the helmet's different. The older style helmets did have a lower profile, but to accommodate for the impact caps and the newer safety features, they've had to go a little bit bigger. You can also see this is a deluxe model New Yorker, so it has a carved brass eagle. Both of these helmets, the Sam Houston and the New Yorker, accommodate a six inch leather front. Uh, so it's a standard leather front size. The differences between these two, because of the NFPA and OSHA compliance, the Sam Houston's are a little bit heavier than the New Yorker's. If you're planning on ordering a New Yorker or a Sam Houston and you wear about a seven and a half cap size, you probably want to go into the large helmet because the mediums are going to fit pretty tight on the front and rear of your head. So it's best to go a little bit bigger if you can, especially once you get your hood and mask on, a large is probably going to fit you better than a medium. If you are a seven and a half or borderline between a medium and a large and you go with a larger helmet, they all come with a fit kit if you buy a new helmet, which is basically foam inserts to fill in the voids in the, hel in the helmet to make it fit better. Something that really can't be beat by the Cairns helmets is the history and tradition. They've been around for 175 years and as you can see this is a 1965 and this is about a 2005 and they're almost identical. They're using the same scroll work that they did originally back when they first started making their leather helmets. This is a Phoenix TL2 leather helmet. Um, there are several things I like about this helmet as uh, opposed to a, uh, a Cairns uh, leather helmet. First thing is uh, the weight compared to this to a uh, Sam Houston. This is 4.3 pounds. A Sam Houston is going to be between 4.5 and 5 pounds depending on what size you get. This helmet is NFPA compliant when you uh, purchase it with the goggles that come with it. This is a flexible leather, and so like a Cairns where it's soaked in resin to uh, harden the helmet. There's several times where I've had things fall on my head while wearing this helmet, and they've caught on this brim, and instead of falling and hitting a, uh, a hard shell, it tends to bounce off this leather, and it doesn't seem to, uh, to rock you as much as wearing a uh, plastic helmet or a, a hard helmet would. There is one thing that I do not like about this helmet. Uh, if I ordered another one, I would do it differently. The, uh, the particular shroud that I got is Velcro. I got that thinking I could remove it, wash it, you know, clean it, things like that. And the only thing that I don't like about that is it doesn't fit well. It's almost like it's not made for the helmet. It doesn't fit well. It's kind of bunched up in the back. And there's also these little Velcro straps right here that tend to rub on your temples a little bit and it just gets annoying after a while. If I had to do it over again, I'd definitely get one that was sewn into the helmet. It would be a lot more comfortable and it would be made for the helmet. I do like this because it is uh, a little bit lower profile than the Cairns, and uh, it does sit, uh, depth-wise, it is about the same as the Cairns. It does accept a standard six-inch leather front. Uh, many uh, front manufacturers have the template for this helmet since it is a more modern helmet. There is some tradition behind this helmet, not as much as uh, the Cairns helmets, but uh, it was the company was started by two firefighters that were friends and enjoyed collecting helmets and uh, started a company in the late, six, or late 60s, early 70s, and began making uh, fire helmets. Overall, I do like this helmet. If I had to purchase one again, I would probably go with the Phoenix instead of the Cairns uh, due to just several factors I mentioned and the uh, cost effectiveness of the helmet. It ranges between $400 and $500. Uh, mine was purchased for around $440. This is a Paul Conway Lion American Heritage leather helmet. Um, it is a lower profile than your Cairns helmets, both the New Yorker and Sam Houston. Um, it is the same weight as a New Yorker, although it sits a lot higher because of the um, suspension system, and it's not very comfortable in my opinion. 
Um, I find that it's unbalanced and it uh, tends to fall off uh, when you're crawling, either the front of your head or to the back. One major difference between this helmet and a Cairns or Phoenix leather helmet is that this is a composite shell that is leather wrapped, so it's not a true leather helmet. Um, this brim is an actual composite piece, much like a, a traditional composite helmet, but it has a leather coating. You can see the seam that it was just sewn on top. This one is a lower profile, so it does have some of the advantages of a traditional uh, composite, but has the look of a leather. If you're going to buy a leather helmet new today, these helmets are pretty much your only choice. The Paul Conway, the Phoenix, and the Cairns New Yorker, and Sam Houston. Um, three important things to consider when going for leather helmets, in my opinion, is weight, style, and fit. The Cairns New Yorker is the lightest of the four. Um, it sits well on your head, is very well balanced, just like the uh, Sam Houston. Um, it is a higher profile than the Phoenix and the Paul Conway. Taking all these factors into consideration, I feel that the Cairns New Yorker is the best choice. Here's a few of the composite traditional types. We have the Morning Pride Ben 2, the Cairns 1044 Defender, the Bullard UST, the Chieftain 1910, and the Paul Conway American Classic. We must start out with the lightest helmet, which is the Paul Conway American Classic. Paul Conway was able to make this helmet without an impact cap in here, but still meet NFPA standards. So they, they reduced some of their weight by taking the impact cap out. It just has a suspension, and then right behind the suspension, you see the actual helmet shell. This version of the Paul Conway has a spring-loaded shield, so it doesn't have any adjustments on either side like knobs. It's just a spring-loaded shield. The next two helmets both weigh 3.7 pounds. That's the Chieftain 1910 and the Bullard UST. The Chieftain 1910 and the Paul Conway are very, very similar. The scroll work on the Chieftain, I actually think is a little bit better looking than the Paul Conway. It's a little more traditional look and they have really good colors to their helmets. The Bullard UST, it's a lower profile composite traditional helmet. It accepts only a five inch front instead of a six inch. So you are limited on your fronts that you can order, but it makes the helmet a lot lower profile than the standard six inch. Next helmet is the Cairns 1044 Defender. It's 4.0 pounds. The neat feature of this helmet is the internal Defender visors that are inside of the helmet to, for eye protection. This meets NFPA standards without having to wear goggles because the Defender visor is inside the helmet with the borks on the outside. The only thing with this helmet that you can notice a little bit is that the helmet looks like it sits a little bit more in front of your forehead because the visor has to be there and it makes a little bit of a space between your forehead and the outside of the helmet. The 1044 does accept the standard 6 inch traditional front. This is a Morning Pride Ben 2. It weighs 4.1 pounds. This one has the 4 inch face shield on it. Uh, this helmet is used by some large metro fire departments like Memphis Fire Department and Fire Department of New York. So this is a really common helmet. It's a real popular helmet. The Eagle is a little bit different than most traditional composites. It's, it's got a different style to it. And you can get a carved deluxe Eagle if you want to add that onto it later on. It also accepts the standard six inch traditional front. These are some of the modern helmets that are out today. They're all really, really similar except for colors and materials. This one's a fiberglass helmet by Line. It's a legacy. And then Bullard uh, PX, which is a thermoplastic. This is a Cairn 660, which is also a plastic. And then these are two boards up front also. Some of the only differences, just the way they fit. Uh, they're all low profile helmet and they're designed to be lighter weight. Most all of them are gonna have a shield on the front, either a four or six inch face shield. Of the helmets that are up here, this line Legacy fiberglass is one of the lighter ones. It's about 2.9 pounds. The Cairn 660 isn't an accurate weight measurement because it doesn't have a face shield, but it was about 2.4 without a face shield. The Bullards are about 3.0 to 3.1 pounds. You can also see with these Bullards, I brought in a helmet that was used at a fire academy and it took a lot of heat, but it has a lot of good protection to it. So it, it did protect really well. 